Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest is the Hex Fight Series promoter, Jacob Watts. Now, we've had Jacob on the show many a time, and we don't hold back with what we want to know. He is here to promote Hex Fight Series 30, May 4th, in Auckland, New Zealand at Trust Arena. It's a huge arena. I think it's like three, 4,000 people. If you're in New Zealand, hit it up. I do believe tickets might be still available. And uh, for the pay-per-view combat sports network, it's like a pay-per-view option. You check it all out. Now, not only do we talk about Hex Fight Series 30, we talk about all the hot issues in Australian MMA, the uh, public uh, disappearing chances of finding Harry Webber fight. That's the best way I could put it. But look, the lightweight champion, Harry Webb has made it very public that he is struggling to find a matchup for June 14th, Hex Fight Series 31. Uh, we, of course, chat about some of those uh, matchups, Hex Fight Series 31, which is coming up June 14th in Melbourne. But, of course, we have to focus about the huge Hex Fight Series 30 uh, on May 4th. Now, look, guys, it's a little, like, at the start, it seems kind of wanky. Like, I'm all like, oh, how good is Hex? And blah, blah, blah. But, like, honestly, it's a pretty amazing card. Um, if you stick through, you know, I always, always push it hard uh, if he's dancing around questions and, and won't give me a, a straight answer and, and answering the questions that you guys want to know. But, um, look, it's good chat, especially... In, there'll be time codes below. You can you pick which favorite bit. We talk about some of the fights. Um, my favorite is actually the last five, ten minutes of the podcast. Um, go a little bit about into why he loves being a promoter and, and, and what we can see from Hex in the future and a bit of like a you know man behind the sometimes suit that he wears when he puts belts around people who win. So, guys, look, long intro, but um, Jacob Watts we've had on the show before. It's definitely a podcast I want you to listen to, and then I want you to check out Hex Fight Series 30, May 4th, Combat Sports Network. We'll hit up hexfightseries.com to find out more. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Jacob Watts. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me, I want to say halfway across the world, but it kind of is to me, but not to him, uh, promoter of Hex Fight Series, uh, Jacob Watts in Auckland, New Zealand, getting ready for Hex Fight Series 30, mate, welcome. Mitchell, you never fail to make me smile with those intros. Ah, what are you like, nine hours ahead of me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wanted to do a podcast at like three forty in the morning before. Well, that's how dedicated you are, mate. You are promoting Hex, <laughs> Hex Fight Series Thirty. Uh, Hex goes global, I believe, was the tagline. Now, how does it feel going global? First of all, yeah, it feels amazing. It's actually um. Yeah, been such a great experience being over here. Um, I've never even been to New Zealand, so that's a first for me um, personally, but also for the business um, to come over here and to to host a show of this magnitude over here. Um, it's it's uh, you know it's been a bit of a culture shock for me because there's everyone over here is so accepting of fight shows, like mm. they love it here. They're so into it. The we we were just on like the the New Zealand version of Sunrise this morning. And they yeah. They did kickboxing and they were getting around it. Like everyone loves it over here, man. I wish that back in Melbourne, it was kind of, it was like that. Cause back in Melbourne, everyone's got their own opinion. You, I know. I noticed you actually had like real media there this time. <laughs> yeah. None of these fake podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised you made it uh, into, into New Zealand. Actually. I didn't think you'd get through customs, you know, with that. What's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, mate, I mean, like you said, you warm welcome from from the New Zealanders, of, some great media as well. Um, is it, does it seem, I don't know, bigger than you even anticipated? Yeah, I guess so. Like we always knew it was going to be big with the the venue that we're going to, the fight card we've put together and just how much i guess lead in we've had for this show you know we've been promoting it since uh november we we dropped the announcement on the day of festival hall back in november 18 um so we always knew it was going to be big but coming over here and and be you know having boots on the ground and actually seeing the hype that is around this show it's crazy like uh, we'll go out for dinner and 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 we went out for dinner tonight and the person, one, the person that serves us, just was asking us what we're doing and what we're doing here. And we let him know. Obviously, we got the fight show on Saturday, and the table next to us was like, "Oh, we're going to that! Like, mm. we can't wait!" 
like the ever it's like the buzz of the town right now, which is just weird to me. It's just yeah, it's hard to wrap my head around, but it's it's awesome. I love it. Well, well I mean, like I loved the other week. I loved watching the 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 Shuriken fight series, which was on UFC Fight Pass, but it didn't feel like it had this level of buzz. I'm noticing that Hex is sharing a lot of like UFC guys. I think we saw Justin Tuffer, we saw Carlos Allberg, uh, Dan Hooker, kind of promoting the show. Is that through? I think I saw like a Stealth Entertainment or something. Is that through like uh, like how is that all tied in? That's just some um, friends of ours that work over here in. New Zealand. Um, they've got an entertainment company and yeah, we've kind of teamed up with them just um just with a bit of promotion. Um a few a lot of those UFC guys, they're like well, they're obviously all coming to the show, but a, a lot of them are um, you know, teammates of if it's teammates of the CKB guys, um Justin and Junior have um have you know pretty much been coming since since we first announced it and um, we've got, I've got, uh, I've just got a bank of videos to come out. So um, the, the who's who of, of not even just MMA, but the who's who of New Zealand's going to be there. We, we, we've got um Jimmy Jackson, who was oh. the funniest man for about five years on, um on like Vine back in the day. Um, we've got Uncle Tick's coming, who's I think got 5 million followers on TikTok. Like all, all these NZ, um, I guess, celebrities, you'd call them, um, or, you know, social media influencers, TikTok is whatever it is they're all keen as to come down to the show as well. So um, I think that's why it's got that kind of special aura, that that feeling. Um, it feels like there's a UFC in town. How do you, I mean, because you've got that in, in, in Melbourne, before we get to go into the fight cards, like even in at the Melbourne Pavilion, like there's always, you know, you got NBL players, AFL players, NRL players, famous boxers, famous celebrities. I mean, I think the maths people are still trying to get in, but they're, they're there as well. But like, you've got, you've got all these celebs. Is that, it sounds dumb, but like, is that a major box you want to tick as a promoter? No, it's, you know, a lot of these people actually will, um, go through our contacts and ask to come down to the show. Like we had the the a uh, few of the Richmond um footy boys that came down last time, and um, Greg, Greg, our referee Greg Glennions is actually the trainer for Richmond. Um, and oh, they right. hit him up, and they were like, "Hey, we you know we see the this show that you're always at. Like we want to come down to it and check it out." So, um, I think that people see Hex as more than just a fight night, and that's what we've always wanted since the the first um day that we took over. We we didn't just want it to be a bunch of dudes going down to the the pub and watching other dudes punch on. Um, we want to make it a, an experience and a night out and something that that people really look forward to going to. And as I continue my reach around for Hex, uh, Hex Fight Series 30, <laughs> does that seem very similar in New Zealand or do you feel like you've taken it to a new level? Uh, I feel like this is another level, Mitch. And I think coming back to Melbourne, um, we're gonna we're gonna be on that level back over there with the hype that this show brings. And um I honestly I I'm look I'm really looking forward to coming back to New Zealand. And I mean, you speak about coming back to Melbourne. I've done my polish, I've done my shine. Hex is amazing. Now, why the fuck can't you get Harry Webber fight? Mate, he <laughs> I, I thought I thought once he's got the belt, everyone's gonna want to fight him. But um yeah, I, you know, there's been a couple of guys that have had matchups locked in. There's been a couple of guys that I thought that we had matched um, that decided to go another option. So um, I don't know if if people just don't want to take that fight. I think um, I think every I think every lightweight in the country knows that he is a sure thing for the UFC. Um, and I just think that yeah, I just think that pe- people don't want to get people don't want to be a highlight reel as cliche as it sounds with his nickname, people don't want to be a highlight reel, but you know, you know us, Mitch, we can, we always find matchups. So I'm working very closely with John, uh, John Campbell um, to find Harry a matchup. And I'm sure we'll have something over the next week or so. And I'm sure when you have it, he will tell me immediately. Um, <laughs> now, so just to, to recap on Harry, you, you like, cause I'm going off a lot of people in the comments and, and stuff that go, Hey, what about this guy? What about this guy? What about this guy? Uh, Caruso, just tell me if you've offered offered them the fight. Antonio Caruso. Offered. Uh, where's Kappa? Offered. Tim Rogers. 
uh, offered to his coach, but he already had a fight matched up because that one did come up. And I never comment on anything. You know me. I never, ever comment on, on any of your posts, but I um, I just wanted to make that one known. We did, we actually, I actually did speak to Craig, um, who's the coach of Cardio Flex. And yeah, he, um, yeah, Tim wasn't available. Wow, I mean, you lost because I'm sure. I'm sure. I know Tim. I'm sure Tim would would take that. He he's a proper warrior. So yeah, um, absolute yeah, stud. Um, anytime I can get you to buy it or Cam O'Neill to buy it from Eternal in the comments, that's when I know I've won. I never buy it, brother. <laughs> I'm like a yeah. gummy shark. <laughs> now I, I've got to ask you about another name that was floated. How realistic is getting <laughs> Isaac, Isaac Hardman? Up- <laughs> that is, oh, not many people would know this, but he actually had a, he actually had a fight on Hex. Um, I think it was his second pro fight back in the day. Um, I mean, probably unrealistic, but it doesn't hurt to ask the question. I, I reckon it costs about twenty grand for him to pick up the phone. Uh, what about what about? I saw another name, and I and I'll leave Harry Webb's opponents. Uh, Brenton Mumford, Eternal Man. But but he did ask how deep are Hex's pockets. Yeah, look, there there are a few. There's still a few names there that um, like you've got uh, you've got Blake Donnelly, Dims. There's 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 definitely some options floating around. Um, it's just finding um finding someone that's the the first priority was finding someone that's on a similar trajectory to Harry with just being on a win streak, um. Uh, and then, yeah, there's there's options aplenty um, for Harry. And as you know, Mitch, if you throw the right amount of money at people, they tend to say yes. So can you guarantee Harry Webb will fight come June 14? I, I gar- absolutely guarantee 100% that Harry Webb will be defending the lightweight title for June 14th, Hex 31. Also, I've heard rumours that he has already sold 30 grand worth of tables. Can you confirm? <laughs> he's He's... He's a weapon with um with his tables. But so yes. He's a weapon with his tables. <laughs> now, mate, as we are oh also like how excited are you for I mean I know we're 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 here to talk about Hex Fight Series 30, but obviously Hex Fight Series 31 looking good as well. Uh Sem Kakembo versus Jarrett Wilbraham. I mean, how exciting is that matchup looking? I've been waiting for that fight since uh probably March of last year when Obviously, the fight between Jarrett and um, Khan Offley went down, and then there was just like a blow up there between Absolute and Freestyle. Mm. Not just the fighters, they because mm. there was the Lisa and Amina thing as well, mm. and then there just became this little rivalry. And it's been a fight that you know it's been you know Jar- like Sam wanted the fight, Jarrett couldn't do it, then Jarrett wanted it, and it didn't work for Sam. So I'm glad that it um has finally come to mm. fruition. And it's really starting to heat up. These guys aren't holding back, which is, it's good to see. It's refreshing. It's been a little bit, um, everyone's been a little bit respectful over the last couple of shows. Um, so it's, it's nice to see a little bit of shit talking going on. It just spices up the, spices up the fight, the fight game. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for that fight. And just, it's just going to be a really good technical fight as well. Two guys that are pretty similar. They're both, you know, long rangey strikers that can compete on the ground. They've got basically the same record. I think it's seven and two and six and two. Um, so yeah, I think that that'll be a really good fight. And with the featherweight title fight that um, will be on the card as well, you know, if, if um, as long as either Justin or Michael don't get injured uh, on their, in their fight on the weekend, the winner of that will fight a Dallas in June. And um, yeah, it's the cards are starting to align. And, uh, I mean, that does transition us perfectly into Hex Fight Series 30. Now, there's a bucket load of other fights on the card, and I do implore everyone else to check them out. But we only got so much time. Uh, of course, you pulled off the heist of a century. Uh, Justin Van Heerden stealing him from the grass of Eternal uh, and offering him a fight with Michael Barber, which is not what we all expected. I definitely wouldn't call it a steal. Um, Justin actually... Came came to us and um yeah it's 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 not stealing if if he's not yours so um I'm I'm really excited to have Justin back on Hex we had him he fought Josh Riley back in the day and he obviously had his um his jujitsu uh, match against George um but it's really good to have him back on the show he's a character 
Um, and yeah, people are sleeping on Michael Barber. Mm. Uh, it's like, you know, y'all must have forgot because <laughs> Michael Barber is one of the hardest fights in the, in that division. He's he just will walk you down with his hands up, just dirty box you like. He he's a tough fight for anyone, and I people are just discounting that, and they're like, oh, you know, Justin's just going to walk through him. Well, he didn't last time they fought, and um, and you know, I know both guys have improved since then, but yeah, Barber's a tough fight, man. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. Of course, this is set up for you know, let's be real, you you want Justin and Abdallah for the featherweight belt. If Michael Barber does get the win, is he guaranteed a shot? Hundred percent. The winner of this fight gets a shot, and um, I'd love to see Michael and, and Abdallah go at it because there would be an interesting matchup because of the the size difference and the the pressure that Michael would put on Abdallah. I want both of those guys to fight him. I want everyone to fight everyone, Mitch. <laughs> uh, and like, uh, will we have? I mean, you're not in the business of of. of flying dudes out or having Abdallah, but we're going to promote that probably immediately. The the winner winner takes on Abdallah. And is that going to, what are we thinking? Co-main, main for, for 31? Uh, oh, I think we'll wait and see what happens on the weekend because there's potentially another fight coming out of the New Zealand card that may take the position of main event Oof. For, that, um, for the June show. So I'm not going to give anything more away. Um, but I don't think it would be that hard to work out. Okay. All right. The now, options that, that could potentially be. We move up the card. Mate, there's an absolutely stacked card. Jenna Fabian taking on Jamie Ederden. Now, this fight, I mean, Jamie Ederden, I feel like, has always been a cracker and a banger of a, a, of a fight, but she didn't have the most appealing record a year, two years ago. She's now kind of put together at least a winning record now, so she's looking for some big things. Jenna Fabian... Obviously, uh, a start of a career training out of city kickboxing. When could we see? I mean, I know this is a catchweight bout, but when could we see a women's like belt? Is this not worthy of a of a women's one sixty five or super lightweight or something like that? I've just never really believed in the super belts. Um, I, I, like I, I definitely think that this fight is worthy of a belt. Um, and obviously, we do have a women's belt with um with Lisa and. Mm. We do have some plans in the future for uh, maybe a belt at straw weight as well. Um, we want to really start promoting the the female athletes from across Australia, New Zealand, and and beyond. Um, it's just about finding matchups, uh, as you know, Mitch. It's it is a um, especially the heavier weight classes. Like they're very th- they're very thin. There's not much competition in there. You know, Jamie's kind of fought everyone at at um, sixty six kilos at featherweight. Um, and she's that's what's forced her to to go up and fight, um, generate a bit of a, he- a heavier weight. But um, I de- definitely think the fight is you know t- title fight worthy. But I've just I just don't really believe in doing the belts at at um super lightweight because or super whatever it is super lightweight super welterweight because um you know if if Jenna wins she's probably going to fight at at seventy seven and if Jamie wins she's probably going to go back down to sixty six so. It, which, which you're just putting a belt on a fight for the sake of it. And of course, that's what you, you want to get away from these days is you want those belts to be competed for regularly, don't you? That's it, Mitch. Correct. Now we move on to a really fun fight. Uh, of course, uh, Ray Mart uh, taking on Blood Diamond. Uh, first question, how expensive was Blood Diamond? Not expensive, brother. <laughs> he... um. But he, but I'll tell you what, he's worth every penny he's getting paid because he's a fun fighter. Um, he's another one where I think people it's people uh, must have forgotten how good he actually is. Um, had a pretty just just got put against um, opponents that w- in the UFC that were not tailored to his style. Um, I think pe- everyone forgets how good of a kickboxer he is, and. Um, and then across from him, you got Raymart, who's just an absolute weapon. He's probably the the most underappreciated six and one fighter in the history of MMA. Um, yeah, he's got a great record. He's a good finisher, good, really good striker. He's good on the ground. So, um, I think that, yeah, th- this is another fight that's just going to be really fun for the fans. Well, I think it's because Raymart's fought what once in like 
five or six years. So I, I think people have forgotten him. Yeah, like you said, Blood Diamond, I mean, people don't even realize that he was kind of that add-on when when Israel got signed to the UFC. Uh, obviously accomplished in like kickboxing and whatnot, but he was like part of this and he didn't get the respect because everyone thought, oh, he's only there because of this. He's only there because of that. But mm -hmm. he's de he's definitely a banger of a fight. That's definitely a, a, a fan-friendly fight. Um, how do you think that one goes? I mean, we'll talk about the the last three fights we've just talked about. How, do you see all three of them going the distance? Or um, I think Michael and Michael and um, Justin will go the distance because they're just so tough. Um, the other fights, it's hard to tell. Um, they're they're pretty like they're very evenly matched and and all all people involved in those other two fights with the females and with the welterweights, all four of those people. Could, can finish a fight at any moment in time. So um, time will tell. And may I now need to move on to the final three fights of the card. Um, first of all, it's on Combat Sports Network in New Zealand. Is that available in Australia? You're not on being sports anymore, I don't believe. Um, what is the broadcaster for Australians? Yeah, CSN's available worldwide. Um, so... There's a pay-per-view option or there's a subscription-based option that you can use to watch the fight. So um, it's yeah available not just in Australia and NNZ, but worldwide. And is that uh, is that a placeholder? Is that only in New Zealand or are you Combat Sports Network for forever? Once again, time will tell, Mitch. <laughs> now, three fights left in the card. I need to ask you about this. You got the heir apparent to city kickboxing, the prodigy uh, Navajo Sterling, who is one of the most hyped up 2 and fighters you will ever see in your life. First of all, you matched him with a guy, uh, Ladar Saunders, who I'm going to be honest, and I've said it to you off air, I'll say it to you on air. It feels like I, it would have been illegal. I actually, I actually had him matched against two other people prior to that as well. So I had him matched against a 10 and 0 Japanese heavyweight. Um, and then I had him matched against another guy. Had him matched against Ladar, pulled out. We had him matched against a guy from Poland, pulled out. So that was the, his fourth opponent change. And then up steps Stu Dare, who is just an absolute animal to take this fight on short notice. Um, and yeah, I spoke to Stu on the phone when we... Um, when we we're organizing the fight and um the first thing he said to me was what's that, what's next after i beat this guy so <laughs> um so he's just a weapon but he recently fought at well to late um now he's fighting a guy that has fought at heavyweight uh any concerns with that no Stu i saw Stuart actually at a boxing show in tassie and he's bulked up since um since stepping away um he's actually gotten turn into a pretty big boy. So, and, and it's Stu there. If anyone knows how to handle himself in there, it's him. I've got, I've got no, no worries with him. Um, I, I, otherwise I wouldn't match the fight. I mean, that's a lie. You want Navajo on the card regardless. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't, I would never, I would never put a fight as safety, you know, put him into a, un, a crazy unfair matchup just, just to get a fighter on the card. But would you admit that the Navajo Sterling versus Studer and the Justin Van Heerden, Michael Barber on the outside, like looks to people as if you want Justin to win, you want Navajo to win? Yeah. Well, the, if you just look at topology and look at their record, then sure. Like, you know, but that's just, that just shows that people don't know the fight game, especially the Justin and Michael thing. Like it's, it is, um, very frustrating to me that, and it, I can't imagine how frustrating it must be for Michael that everyone's just, it's just Justin and Abdallah, Justin and Abdallah, like, you know, Justin's going to walk through Michael, this and that. Like, it just shows that some, that a lot of people don't know the fight game, Mitch, because like I said, and I've said this a hundred times and you've said it, and the people who know the fight game have said it, that Michael is one of the toughest fights in that division. And I'm going to continue that with, as we move on to the flyweight championship bout, Sean Gauchi versus his international opponent. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> Naka, Naka Sukasa Nobuyoshi. That is how you pronounce it, Mitch. Because I know in every interview you just never say it, but um, give him give him the respect he deserves. Nakata 
Nakata Sakasa. Sean Gauchi. Uh, <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about him because, I mean, you know my critique with this, and I'm an honest man with you. I know that this looks like Sean Gauchi will want to wrap the belt around him, get him a flyweight win, get him to the UFC so Hex can do a post and they can go, oh, that's our flyweight champ. Because why would you want to fly a guy all the way over and put the belt on him? And then just this is clearly served up not served up it's obviously a tough fight but this is clearly in hex's best interest is to have sean gauchi become the flyweight champion i'll just start by reminding you that we've had champions in japan and korea before um and then just secondly on that point we've got the, the your, your two your two other options in australia is Stuart nickel who didn't want the fight and anthony drillich who unfortunately is um unable to fight on hex so um, they're your two options. Um, ne- neither of them could work. So um, what we did was we went and got a absolute animal from Ryzen that has that puts people to sleep and has a great record. He's highly ranked in Japan. And like I said, we've had champs in Japan and Korea before. They say Stuart Nickel didn't want the fight. <laughs> what, did I what, say do that? Mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Just uh, scheduling issues. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, Sean Gauchi, though, how excited are you? He's he's in an underrated fight. I've had this conversation with him. I'm underrating his fight. He is one of the most, I would say, if not the most underrated fighter in Australian MMA. And I think he precedes a guy that he's beaten who previously, I think people forget, uh, Steve Ersig was the most underrated fighter about three fights before he made it to the UFC. Sean Gauchi feels like he has filled that spot. How much do you feel that Sean Gauchi is like disrespected? Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from and I see it because it's just, it's there's been unfortunate things that have happened in his career and in his life that have kind of played that hand for him. Like we had him obviously matched against Cody, had him back in, I think, February of last year. And Cody had to pull out. And so we we had only a couple of days to fill that fight. We had to bring in the Korean Mustang, who was 2-0 and at the time, who was an f- absolute weapon as well, like like a killer. Um, but but he's a 2-0 and Korean on paper. So people just think that it's – they look back at that and they don't see that that you, we, we filled that fight on a couple of days' notice and um, our options were limited. And, and Sean went in there and he did his job. He he got the job done and he did dominate that fight. Um, I think that I think that it, it might it might not be until Sean gets in the UFC that people really get, really understand how good he is. And he looks really good at flyweight, like his body. And um, you know, I've been I've spoken to him personally and just the the way he's feeling mentally down at flyweight. He's he's cut down properly. Um, yeah, I think I think that it, it it won't be until that he is in the UFC where people actually give him the respect that he deserves. Is it harder as a promoter? Is it harder to book guys against internationals than it is against ranked Australians, or does it really not matter? Uh no, it's not harder because the because the coaches and the fighters actually. I'm going back on this point again. They understand the fight game, and they um. They don't just look at where someone's from or, you know, there's there's all these reasons that people bring up of, as to why why there's unfair matchups, but people just, they just don't really understand the fight game and that styles make fights and that, you know, there's there's plenty of talent overseas that can come over here and win belts. And, and Nobuyoshi is one of those people. He, like I said, he's he fought on Ryzen. He puts people to sleep. He's taller than Sean. He's longer than Sean. He's every chance of beating Sean and, and taking taking that mantle of the best flyweight in the country. Is there any, as a promoter, I mean, I go on about it, right? But as a promoter, is do you see any like drop-in ticket sales when, you've, you know, say like a Sam and a Jarrett, right? Where everyone goes, oh, we all know who that guy is and who that guy is and it means this and it means that. Or... Jarrett, oh, sorry, uh, Sam versus some guy from Vietnam. Like, do you see a difference in, like, ticket sales, stream, interest? Like, does that actually have any effect on the the business at all? 
No, it doesn't. And especially not in Melbourne because we've we've got such a uh invested and loyal fan base in the in the brand. We could put I could put you versus Joel Rasmussen. I could have the from the stands boys fight on the co main event and 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 we'd still sell out the venue because people know what what a heck show brings and um and yeah they you know we, like I said they're just a loyal and, and invested fan base and um it's just an added bonus that we get to put on these crazy fights that everyone wants to see. Well, so you said you wouldn't make unfair fights. That would be like Navajo and Ladar Saunders all over again if you put me with Joel. How do you? Joel Joel would tear you to shreds. I would beat any Australian media guy out not named Callum Potter. Callum, I was about to say Callum Potter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a complete idiot. Jacob, I'm not a complete idiot. Uh, so uh, Callum Potter, if you're watching this. And I would beat any promoter not named Damien Brown. So there you go. Uh, mate, you'd, have, you'd, you'd, you'd have me on toast. I'll, I'll give you that. that that's, what, that's why I'm making the fights and not, not fighting. Why do you think I'm talking about it? <laughs> I'm not bloody in there. Um, I'm skipping jiu-jitsu class just tonight just to do this. That's how important this is. Now, Thanks, man. look, I will always critique fights, critique cards, no matter how many like people it pisses off because at the end of the day, it's my job. And if I'm not honest, it's like, what's the point in doing this? But in saying that, your heavyweight title fight, your main event for Hex Fight Series 30, I'd tell you if it was shit. And it is one of the better heavyweight fights, probably one of the best heavyweight fights I've seen in 10 years, 15 years maybe, made in Australia. Brando Perichik at just 2-0, and o, might even be 3-0? No, 2-0. And, o, and yeah, yeah. he's kind of had to struggle with fights over the last half a decade. Of course, an accomplished kickboxer. One fight, one more fight he could easily be in the contender series in the UFC. And he's taking on a guy in Randall Raymond, who is the heavyweight champion. And he is without a doubt. I mean, we talked about underrated guys with Sean Gauchy. Randall Raymond could fight in the UFC. He's a black belt that is a bare knuckle boxer. Can you talk about that fight? Let me just start by saying this is why we have an active heavyweight division because <laughs> there's nothing like a heavyweight main event. And Randall's this is Randall's third heavyweight main event in a row. Um, yeah, he is the definition of, of of a dog. Like he's just he's got a chin of steel. He's just a, a like wiry veteran, but he's he's going in there and finishing these young dudes. Like he finished Ricky, in, in his last fight, he's finished some really good fighters. He's beat people by checking their legs and breaking their legs. He'll take you down. He'll submit you. He'll knock you out on the feet. He, um, th this, this is, this is the hardest fight that Brando can possibly have on the, on the Australian and New Zealand scene. Um, this is the hardest fight for anyone at heavyweight. And, um, it just says, uh, I guess it says a lot about Brando's character that, um, he didn't even think twice before saying yes to this. He, he said yes straight away. Um, he knows, he knows his goal, and he knows that getting through someone like Randall, um, will get him to that goal. Um, but man, it's going to be a tough fight, and everyone over here is talking about Brando, and no, no one, no one's talking about Randall. Man, I'm telling, if Randall gets a hold of you, it's it's going to be a long night. So, um, it's 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 such an interesting fight because they've, I guess, they've got their, they've both got their me methods to win, but they can both win in the opposite method. It's such an interesting fight. It, it really is. And I feel like if, if Brando wins this, like, of course, both him and Navajo could have gone off to the race. They, I feel like they both could have, I know they needed fights, but I feel like both of them could have sat out for a year and the UFC still would have taken them. That's how like highly credited they are. But to then be handed Randall, who at 13 and three, I think it is, and he yep. still feels so disrespected and underrated. But if he beats Brando, surely, I mean, I know he talks about retirement, but surely he gets a shot. Oh, you'd you'd have you'd have to think so. And what and why wouldn't he want to go and test himself against the best guys in the world? Beating beating someone like Brando would be huge for him. Um hopefully people don't just look at what the tapology record and say, Oh, he's beat a two and oh, and he's just got fed someone. Um, hopefully they actually look into who Brando <laughs> is because um, that would be a shame. But I think 
whichever side whichever side wins this, you'd expect um would be getting the call up for the that August uh August UFC show. Yeah, and do you think uh do you think Randall win or lose is done? I, I it's hard to tell, like because if he if he goes out there and starches Brando and gets a UFC contract, <laughs> well, there's no way he's done. We whatever he decides to do, we'll we'll back him a hundred percent. He's been a great, great um fighter and a great champion for us. He's been great for the fans. He's always putting on fun fights. He's walking out of the cage smoking ciggies <laughs> as he's walking back to the back rooms. Um, yeah, he he's he is fun to have around, man. And it, it would it would honestly be a sad day if um if Randall decided to hang up the gloves after this fight. Um, yeah, it would, it would be a sad day, but whatever he does, we'll, we'll back him 100%. Yeah, I reckon if there's one critique of Hex, it's to get Randall more media. Like, as in, you guys need to just put that man out there a little bit. Would you see his uh, sponsor on his gloves? Yeah. <laughs> Which was like, That's what scares my... me, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is my sponsor, well, and these gloves are shit. <laughs> uh, well, look, if... um. If you were a dedicated uh, member of the Australasian MMA uh, media circuit, um, you would be attending the Hex 30 press conference and you could therefore ask Randall some questions, but. That one hurts. That one hurts a little bit. <laughs> it's nice um, to get you back every once in a while. No, uh, I will be there in Melbourne and you have, I don't even think you have room for me. Uh, how many media members do you have coming? Uh, we've got, I think eight. We've got eight different ones coming to the press conference, um, and then two, two are uh, more not not, you know, MMA podcasts, but actual media coming down to to that as well. So that's all. This will be our biggest press conference yet. Yeah, is that a big? Before I let you go, is that a big? At least for you, like personally, like are they are they big boxes to tick for you to like increase the media each time and all that sort of stuff. We 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 want to keep growing with every show. Um, it's not necessarily the media. It could be um, it could be the stuff that people don't see, like the fighter rooms. I I know we've got the best, um, the best fighter rooms, um, of any show in in Australia and New Zealand. But we just want to keep upgrading stuff like that, upgrading the production, upgrading the the whatever it is. We want to continually upgrade because. The second that we get stagnant and the second that we, you know, sit back and just think that um, we're the top dogs, that's then someone else takes over. So we just got to keep growing, keep grinding. Um, and that's why we're doing stuff like going to New Zealand because um, it's just going to continue to grow and not, not just grow us, but grow the sport as a whole. Uh, because, you know, as we've seen in the last 18 months of, uh, this is the best Australian MMA has ever been. And I'm not saying it's just because of us. It's because of the level that everyone has risen to now. You know, there's some amazing shows. Beatdown, Damien Brown is absolutely killing it with Beatdown. Dan with XFC is killing it. There's some, just some crazy shows going on right now. So, Any others? Um, uh, sorry, no. Well, there, there's heaps <laughs> of other shows. There's some great, there's great shows in, um, in New Zealand. Um, there's great shows in in Australia. There's even a show in T Tahiti this weekend. Um, John, I think John Varke is going over there. So there's some great shows going around. Oh mate, all right. Well, we've that we've done well this one. You won't be getting in too much trouble. Um, oh, last question I want to ask you. Um, now this I know you don't. Question. Nah, it's not. It's actually, it's actually <laughs> not. It's actually not. It, it's to do with the growth as well. Like I know that you'll never be like, hey, look inside Hex's wallet, check this out. But is there enough growth each event that you're able to pour money back in type thing? Because a lot of people, a lot of fighters, a lot of fans have the idea that promotions are just almost like, you're either two, one of which way. You either think they're rolling in it and you guys are just showing up in Ferraris or you just, promoters are always like, oh, I just broke even. I just broke even. I just broke even. Do you know and can you kind of like report on how Hex is doing and kind of how much it's exponentially improving in terms of what you put back into the business? Let me, I'll just, I'll, I'll answer it with this, that if we, if we, if, if running this thing was all about money, we would just sit at the Melbourne Pavilion 
and sell out the shows there um, four times a year and just that's it. Like that, if, 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 if it was all just about the money, that's why we're testing ourselves. We're, we're going to the next level with things like New Zealand Festival Hall, interstate shows in 2025, coming back to New Zealand. We are, um, we are continually, continually upgrading the brand and, and these things cost money. Um, so it's, it's good that we're in a position um, because of it's, it's because of the fans and it's because of the fighters. It's not, it's not because of me. It's not because of the, it's not because of anyone else behind the scenes. It's because of the, the fighters and the fans. That's why we have the opportunity to do things like come to New Zealand and with the support, like the support that we've had from the people of New Zealand, like I, it's, it's, it's weird. I've never felt this feeling before, but I'm just so thankful that everyone over here is so behind Hex because we will definitely be coming back here. And uh, I promise the last question. Uh, are you, like your involvement, right? Like I think you mentioned last interview that you're taking on a bit more of the matchmaking stuff. You seem to be rising up the ranks of Hex, but you're not like a Cam O'Neill. Like you don't own it. You don't own Hex, do you? You just work for Hex, correct? Yeah, just just working six six days a week, brother. Just a just Promote, a dude prom, promoting and, and matchmaking. But we've got it. We've got an awesome team. Um, we've got a really really strong team. I I couldn't I couldn't do this by myself. I would I would um be losing my hair quicker than I already am. Um, uh, but I I think that's why I wanted to ask you though, like. I think because people are loving what you're doing and I'm not just saying it because you're the only event that lets me come in, but like, it's just <laughs> the fact that like people are really saying like you're doing a really great job. So I guess people kind of want to know, like, is it year to year? Do you, uh, do you personally sign contracts? Are you employed? Are you just mates and helping out? Like how <laughs> is, how is your, how can we guarantee Jacob what sticks around? That was, oh, that's Jacob Watts. Jacob Watts will be here until the end of time. We will be installing a ramp to get up the ring, and you'll have to wheelchair me in there to put the belts on these people. Um, I absolutely love this shit, and like I said, the team, the team that I work with, they're they're my brothers, man. They are. We are so strong together. Um, we're we're unstoppable when we put our mind to something, and 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 everyone's seen it now. We're unstoppable. Um. And then you know you've seen you've seen the operation firsthand the the you know all the people that help out on the night we've got family friends we've got you know students from gyms we've got like girlfriends boyfriends whatever it is we've we've got such a strong team um, that works around the clock um, in setting up the event and then on the fight night we've we've we're so blessed to have such a good team um, and. None of this would be possible without them. Geez, it only took you 50 minutes to get me a good quote, but this time it might be a good one that doesn't get you in trouble. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> all right, brother. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you that 100 bucks when I see you next. So you said it was five. Right that question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see you, mate. Best of luck. And uh, we'll touch Mitchie. base um, when you get Harry Webber fight. Talk to you soon, then. <laughs> see you later, brother.